I know there's a lot of you church and worship drummers out there been feeling this pain for a long time. So if you've been playing drums in church or you've been part of music ministry for any longer than two weeks, you may have noticed that there's a particular tom groove that just seems to show up everywhere you turn. This particular rhythmic pattern shows up in almost every contemporary Christian song, every worship song, fast, slow, doesn't make any difference. Now I've been in music ministry almost 20 years and I can tell you straight up, I must have played this particular time pattern six, maybe 700 million times. I know a lot of you church drummers out there knew exactly which tom pattern I was talking about. This tom groove, as far as I'm concerned, is the rhythmic equivalent to the 1564 chord progression, and quite frankly, that needs to stop too. So, anyways, after several years of playing this particular pattern over and over again, at this point, I do whatever I can to avoid playing it. I try to come up with something a little bit more creative that'll still get the job done but will at least make me feel like a musician when I'm playing it. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to give you a couple of alternatives, uh, maybe spark some ideas, you can come up with some stuff on your own. But I'm just gonna show you two of my favorite alternatives to this particular pattern. You can try it for yourself and then maybe try it on the weekend next time you're up on the platform. So it's really not that far of a stretch to come up with something a little bit more creative. Um, there's basically only two elements to this thing. There's 16th notes and there's accents. So, you know, when you think of it that way, there's a few different things. Well, there's a lot of different things that you can do. But one of the ones that I really like to do is a super, super simple idea. Um, it works great for medium and up-tempo. And, um, and a lot of it could be played just on the floor tom. So... In a nutshell, it's really just a matter of, you know, working with that 16th note template, right? And then just moving the accents, you know, to sort of different and more interesting places. So the first one I'm going to show you is super easy. Um, the main thing that I do with this particular one is it starts with just playing consistent eighth notes on the floor tom with the right hand. That for me just kind of helps me to set the pace for the, um, for the groove or for the pattern or whatever. And then, you know, I just add a couple of strokes with the left hand to make it more interesting. So the main pattern that I have in my head or the main rhythmic pattern that I have in my head with this particular one is, um, you know, if this is our tempo, two, three, four, one, the accents would go one, two, uh, one, uh, uh, one, two, uh, one, uh, uh, one, two, uh, 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 two, three, uh, 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 like that. So let me play it for you in context, and then I'll play it for you slow, break it down, let you see what I'm doing, and then you can try it for yourself. Check this out.
Now this second one that I'm going to show you is one that I love to play with slow tempos. You can play it with both hands. If the tempo is slow enough, you can play it with one hand, which I'll demonstrate in a second here. But it's the same idea. It's just 16 notes. You know, a lot of times I'll just play, I'll play the whole thing on the floor tom, whether I got a 14 beside me or it's a 16. Or sometimes I'll play it between the, uh, the 14 and the 16 if I got two beside me. But what I'll do with this is, again, just play straight 16ths. Um, and the particular rhythmic pattern that I'm playing as far as where I'm putting the accents, super cool. It just goes one, two, three, four. Throw a one and three on the kick under that, man, and you can play that for an hour. So the only disclaimer I can really give you with these two grooves is that feel is what makes them what they are, all right? You have to play these with a very confident level of feel, otherwise they're not going to sound good, they're not going to feel good at all. So you can't be stiff arming these things out, you know what I'm saying? Keep your hands nice and loose, work those sticks from the wrist. And, you know, the more relaxed you are when you play these two grooves, the better they're going to sound. So I'll include a PDF of these two grooves in the description box. You can download it if you want to try it for yourself. But they were really just meant to sort of serve as ideas. I'm just showing you what I do to sort of escape playing that particular tom groove. Um, these have worked for me for years. I never really get tired of playing them. So this video, although I might have sounded a little salty in a couple of spots, it was done with good intentions. My goal with this, I mean, if I could just save one drummer from impaling themselves on a cymbal stand, mission accomplished. For the benefit of those that have been staring at this t-shirt the entire time and saying, I gotta get me one of those, you can get one of these. This is mine, man. This is, this is a beat down exclusive. And 
there's a sale going on in the merch shop right now. So you can get one, 15% off. Just use the discount code DIDDLES. You can head on over there. This comes in a couple of different colors. And uh, yeah, you need this. Go ahead and hit that link in the description box. Grab yourself a shirt or two. Great way to support the channel. And look cool while you're doing it. And that's it. New viewers, new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. Right there, subscribe button. Make sure you mash that before you bounce. Drop a comment below if you got one. Share this video if you dig it. Like, subscribe. See you next video.